Luigi's Mansion. An absolute spooky, yet very fun classic. This game requires no explanation or introduction. Nor do iceberg videos at this point. While this particular image is a creation of mine, a few of the entries are borrowed from other Luigi's Mansion icebergs. This is going to be a long one, so get comfy, but not too comfy, because this iceberg is going to put you on the edge of your seat for one hell of a ride. While this is for the most well-known trivia for the game, you'll likely find yourself learning new details about familiar topics, so don't fret about this layer being all information you already know about. Later Appearances of the Mansion Ever since the game released, the mansion itself has become one of the most iconic locations in not just Mario games, but Nintendo in general. So of course it appeared in a bunch of later games. The most well known is its Smash stage, debuting in Brawl, and also both Mario Kart DS's racetrack and Double Dash's battle map. The battle map originally just reused Double Dash's Bowser's Castle theme, but it was given a remix of Mario Kart DS's Luigi's Mansion for 8. A different mansion based off the original appears as an attraction in the background of Mario Kart 8's Baby Park. At the end of Luigi's Mansion, Luigi gets a nice new home that has a different design depending on what ranking you get in the game. The A-Rank home, which is a mansion, gets a cameo at the background of GCN Luigi Circuit. It would seem like that'd make it the canon home Luigi gets, but the D-Rank house appears as Luigi's home in Dark Moon. Kinda pathetic he only got the D-Rank. The original Spooky Mansion appears in a ton of Mario sports games as well, those being Mario Power Tennis, Mario Hoops 3 on 3, Super Mario Sluggers, and Mario Sports Mix. According to leaked info about the Super Mario Bros. movie, it was supposed to appear in it within the Darklands. The Mansion Patrol minigame in Super Paper Mario also has a strong resemblance to the foyer within the mansion. Phone Room Shadow. A very well known spooky aspect of the game, where when Luigi talks on the phone within the phone room and lightning strikes, his shadow appears disconnected and on the wall, giving the appearance of what a lot of people describe as Luigi being hung. It was widely debated on whether this is some sort of intentional dark Easter egg or not. Really, it's just a glitch. When Luigi is on the phone, the camera is lower to the ground and closer to Luigi than usual, which causes the shadows to not work correctly. This same glitch can be seen in other areas of the game, like when talking to Toad, Safari Ghost. A supposed scrapped portrait ghost would have been in the game within the Safari Room, this would have been an Australian hunter with either a gun or a knife, and told Luigi he wanted to add him to his collection. This ghost, though, is just an urban legend. It seems to actually been based off a blurb on the October 2001 Nintendo Power issue that read, When your ghoul-busting mission takes you to the trophy room, proceed with caution. If you meet up with the ghost of a hunter, he'll want to add Luigi to his collection. Despite the issue using a screenshot of an early version of the Safari Room, it released after the Japanese version of Luigi's Mansion already came out, and there's no other hint of a Safari Ghost in any official manner, meaning that this Nintendo Power comment was just a joke to add some extra spooky flavor. I guess someone didn't realize the Japanese release date, and took the joke seriously, spiraling down to a whole huge urban legend. Space World FMV A short animated trailer for when they first revealed the game to the public at Nintendo's old gaming convention, Space World. It depicts Luigi entering the mansion, 
getting the attention of ghosts, and then chasing Luigi around, terrifying him. For the longest time ever, we only got short clips of this trailer and a few screenshots. It wasn't until 2021 when footage of the entire animation was finally released. A screenshot of this trailer is actually used in the final game for the pause screen. Another screenshot is also used, but I'll get to that later. The most infamous part of this animation is the ending, the creepy depressed Luigi. A common misconception is that this ending bit was used for the original game over sequence, but there's no proof to back that up. Some rumors even went as far to say that Luigi is possessed or a zombie in this scene. Game Boy Horror Clock In early footage of the game, a clock could be seen on the Game Boy Horror. Another common urban legend is that the game was supposed to be on a 24 hour time limit for Luigi to save Mario. The only known real use the clock was used for was in the demo, where it started at 12 a.m. And once it reached at 1.30 a.m., which was only a couple of minutes in real time, EGAD would call Luigi and the demo would end. The clock is still unused in the final game, and activating it can allow it to reach up to 6 a.m., but it just loops back to 12 once it does so. Beta Music A lot of the music was redone during the game's development. This was done to give more realistic immersion with the music, with Luigi's humming and whistling. The most famous original track was the Dark Room theme. In the famous E3 2001 trailer, along with the Dark Room theme, you could hear what sounds like the original puzzle and danger themes. shows the creepy depressed Luigi again. It plays the original title theme, as also shown in the playable demo of the game. In fact, it's still unused in the final game. Yeah! In said playable demo, different themes for Egad's lab. It's Luigi's first game, solely for his own. And he actually is the one that gets to save the day here. He uh, is he inherited this mansion. Him and him and Mario. And he... The foyer key cutscene. The EGAD parlor cutscene. Lit's rooms can all be heard. She's in with the translucent walls. So you can see that there's a door there, but we're looking through the door. As I pull away from this door, it, it goes away as I get closer. Overheat meter. The Poltergust 3000 originally had a bulkier design and supposedly was called the Poltergust 400, although I can't find a source on that name. This version of the Poltergust would overheat and catch on fire if used too much without letting it cool down, as shown on the overheat meter on the HUD. While it sounds like catching ghosts was purely harder at this point of development, it was actually easier in several aspects. Ghosts couldn't drag Luigi if the player didn't hold back on the control stick. He sucked up ghosts faster, and ghosts had less HP. Bashers. 
In earlier builds of the game, purple versions of golden ghosts lurked in hallways where they would be invisible and sneak up on Luigi, freaking him out. This would cause Luigi's health to drop down to 50 temporarily and cause him to fall on his butt and quickly crawl away. These ghosts don't have official names, but are called bashers by fans. Unused data in the game shows that golden ghosts, purple punchers, blue twirlers, grabbing ghosts, and even the ceiling ghosts could have, or at least had variations that could scare Luigi like the basher. The scared crawling Luigi effect is still unused in the final game, along with two other variations. One of them causes Luigi's health to only drop down to 70, but causes a broken animation. A trailer actually briefly shows a white basher who drops Luigi's health to 70. The last unused scare effect doesn't affect anything gameplay-wise, but it causes Luigi to shake and shiver in fear and tiptoe in a broken-looking manner when walking. T rating. Another urban legend. This one being that the game was supposedly originally intended to be rated T, probably because of the other urban legends. Nintendo 64. It's been said by some that the game was originally planned for the Nintendo 64, but according to others it wasn't. Looking into it myself, I found that in an interview, Nintendo thought about it being on the N64, but that seems to be the extent of it. Rankings As mentioned before, the game has a system where it ranks your playthrough at the end of the game. The rank depends on how much money you collected during the playthrough, and Luigi will win a new home, where the quality and size depends on the rank. These ranks go from A all the way down to H, and just cause it only goes up to A rank doesn't mean it's easy. You'll have to catch every boo, know some of the cryptic secrets, and be very thorough to achieve such rank. Unused in the game are graphics for a bit of a different ranking system. One image depicts a happy Luigi, another a very happy Luigi, and the last one shows a very depressed one, similar to the one seen in the trailers. The game also has individual rankings for each portrait ghost you catch. You can tell your rank from the picture frame with it being bronze, silver, or gold. Each frame comes with a unique image of the ghost with it. Basic portrait ghosts are ranked from how much HP you can drain at once, with gold being rewarded if you drain at least 90 HP at once. Boss ghosts, on the other hand, are ranked from how much HP you have left when catching it, meaning that you cannot get the gold rank even if you play perfectly, cause you entered the boss with you having less than 90 HP. Treasure Ghosts Two types of hidden ghosts exist in the game that reward Luigi with lots of treasure for catching them. The first is the Speedy Spirit, who hides inside a furniture. It flies around the room very fast and Luigi has one chance to catch one or else it will disappear forever. The second ghost is the gold mice, who can be found by scanning hidden pieces of cheese or by spawning at random within hallways or specific rooms. Unlike speedy spirits, you have infinite chances to catch golden mice by leaving the room and coming back, as long as the lights are still off. Vincent Van Gogh Vincent Van Gogh is the last portrait ghost in the game. It is revealed that he is the source of all basic enemy ghosts, as they are paintings come to life. Mansion is an illusion. The mansion itself is very mysterious. Egad says that it suddenly appeared one day. At the end of the game, it disappears without a trace. Mirrors. With the Game Boy Horror, Luigi can look into it for a first person mode where he can scan furniture. If Luigi scans a mirror, crazy effects will appear on screen and everything will start spinning causing Luigi to be teleported back to the foyer. Scanning the mirror in the foyer just causes him to be centered in the middle of the room. Duplicate Clothing 
when Mario was kidnapped, various items of his was lost throughout the mansion. This includes his hat, glove, and shoe. When you do find Mario, you can see he still has all of those on him. Didn't Mario bring a spare hat along with an extra singular glove and shoe for some reason? Observatory. The observatory is probably the most unique room and standout part of the game. It comes after the already odd Astral Hall, and starts out as this small rustic room. When Luigi looks into the telescope, half the room becomes space and Luigi must destroy the moon to obtain Mario's star. I sound ridiculous describing this. Mario 64 Toad Jingle when talking to Toad, the intro to his theme is a familiar little jingle from Super Mario 64. Totaka Song Totaka's song is a short track hidden in many Nintendo games composed by Kazumi Totaka, such as Animal Crossing. Totaka's song is hidden in Luigi's Mansion if you wait on the control layout screen for long enough. It's kind of a jump scare with you listening to a basic drum beat for so long for it to suddenly change to something radically different. Unused in the game is another variation that would have been played by Melody Pianissima, where she would quiz you on the song, and you would have to answer with Toto Keke's theme. Toto Keke is Keke Slider's real name, and you could hear Totaka's song in Animal Crossing by requesting him Keke's song. An extra tidbit that little people know is that in the Japanese version, the unused Totaka song is a jumbled mess of random piano notes. Beta Ghost Designs Many ghost designs are seen from various sources that don't appear as proper ghosts in the final game. A lot of various blue and greenish ghosts are seen in the FMV. One of them appears in the tech demo. I'll, I'll talk about the tech demo more later. Unused in the game are sprites for very early designs for golden ghosts and purple punchers. At E3 2001, Golden Ghosts, Purple Punchers, and Blue Twirlers are seen with designs closer to the final game, notably being in different colors and having noses and fangs. Personally, I think the Punchers look better with noses. There's a whole lot of nothing going on here in the final design. The foyer used to have these portraits of a purple ghost in a big top hat. In the final game, there are pictures of ghosts with instruments within the conservatory that resemble the early Golden Ghost and Purple Puncher designs. Fake Door Tells Scattered throughout the mansion are trap doors that will crush Luigi if he tries to open it. There are several ways to tell it apart from a normal door. They never have doormats in front of them, while most real doors do. The problem with that though, is that most real doors do. A guaranteed way to know if a door is real or not is by either checking your map or suck on the door. If it shakes, it's real. 
And if you really hate those doors and want to go the extra step, you can burn them down. Tech Demo When Luigi's Mansion was first revealed at Space World 2000, it was showed off as both the animated trailer along with a tech demo. Or maybe more so a controller demo? Miyamoto himself shows off the demo. It starts off by showing a table within the foyer with a GameCube and prototype GameCube controller. The rest of the demo shows the controller along with a ghost. Pressing buttons on the controller made the ghost do different actions, such as burping or laughing. The control sticks rotated the ghost, and triggers squashed and stretched it. Pal Hidden Mansion after beating a playthrough of Luigi's Mansion, you unlock the Hidden Mansion. It sounds a lot cooler than it actually is. Everything is the same, but Luigi can suck up ghosts faster, and ghosts can do more damage towards Luigi. Luigi's Mansion was a launch title for the GameCube, but the GameCube wouldn't release in Europe and Australia until the next year. This gave Nintendo time to revamp the Hidden Mansion for their version. In their version, the entire mansion is mirrored, tougher ghosts are much more common, more valuable treasure can be found, hearts are less common, boos tend to be much faster, aggressive, and have more HP, and bosses have been modified. Chauncey's belly flop attack is much faster, and his horses are bigger and travel in a zigzag pattern, making them harder to dodge. Bogmire teleports faster, his shadow clones now have red and yellow outlines, and the big shadow clones tend to be more common. Bulasis is the most unique new fight, where Luigi will now inexplicably get on top of his poltergust and ride around on it. This forces Luigi to be in sidestep mode, be much more slippery, but on the other hand, becomes much faster. As for Bowser, he will now fake you out by having random bombs explode much faster than usual, so you'll have to pay attention on how fast they flicker. Daisy Poster Unused in the game is a poster of Daisy. The artwork is from Mario Tennis, and many people used to say that it's evidence that the game was developed for the N64 at first, which doesn't make much sense. The graphic is called Test.Bit, which means that it was well for testing the game. Luigi Skateboarding Okay, I kinda threw this one in as a joke entry. I wanted to add some fan-made content onto this iceberg, and I always found this modded Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 video funny. The music is an instrumental of Rental Floss's Luigi's Mansion remix, if you wanted to know. Worthless Crown Luigi's Mansion has several different types of gems you can find with varying amounts. One of them is the Red Diamond, which is only worth one coin. It so happens that King Boo's crown that Luigi collects after catching him is also a red diamond, meaning that it's worth only one coin. Mario All-Star Sprite This is another entry about gems. When Luigi collects one, his Mario All-Stars SMB1 sprite shows up on the Game Boy Horror. Rink H as mentioned before, Luigi gets a new home depending on what rank he gets. The absolute worst rank, rank H, earns Luigi only a measly tent for a new home. You'd have to actively go out of your way for a rank this bad. In fact, it's really difficult to get it. It's pretty much Nintendo's official can you beat X game without touching any coins challenge. This makes it debatably even harder to obtain than the A rank. Luigi is part of the 0.0001%. This refers to the old game theory video where MatPat concluded that the mansion itself isn't really worth that much due to how old it is and the poor shape it's in, but all the treasure inside makes Luigi insanely rich. Shoelaces. Do you ever notice this is the only game Luigi has shoelaces? Not even Mario has them. Crazy Ghost Theme. Do you remember how the music for when you catch common ghosts sound like? 
For years, I never really noticed the music due to the sounds of the poltergeist, the health draining, the ghosts making noise, and Luigi going, Oh yeah. Until one day, I for some reason paused the game mid catching a ghost and. <laughs> Wow, I didn't realize how insane it sounded the entire time. I mean, it does sound like a lot of noise along with the other sounds, so I guess that's why I didn't notice it. It sounds like it's some track playing backwards, but it's just as crazy as it is forwards. Portrait ghosts have their own catching theme, but it doesn't sound nowhere near as crazy. Takes place after sunshine. King Boo says that he kidnapped Mario out of revenge, but for what? Luigi's Mansion is his first appearance. Some people theorize that Luigi's Mansion takes place after Super Mario Sunshine, where Mario beats King Boo in a boss battle. I can hardly imagine these two iterations of King Boo being the same character. Maybe being beat by Mario just fucked him up that hard? Or, you know, Sunshine Boos are just weird. Green Toad. Unused in the game is a green variant of Toad. Nothing really else to say about that. Stereoscopic 3D. The GameCube was originally going to have an add-on, which was a little screen that attached to the console. This screen would have allowed games to be in stereoscopic 3D. Luigi's Mansion would have been a game to support it, but the peripheral was scrapped due to the crystals to allow stereoscopic 3D on a screen was very expensive at the time, and would have made the screen even more expensive than the GameCube itself. Luigi's Mansion would finally support 3D when the game got re-released for the 3DS. Strange Naming Schemes a lot of the official ghosts and object names are a bit strange, namely with their colors. Gold ghosts, purple punchers, and blue diamonds don't really fit what they actually look like. Gold ghosts are more orange, purple punchers look more pink, and blue diamonds are silver. Ruby, sapphires, and emeralds are just called red, blue, and green stones, or jewels. Flying fish hardly look like fish. Flash doesn't have anything to do with ice, blue blazes are water enemies, and blue twirlers twirl less than some of the other ghosts. Although this name may have come from an earlier version of them, as they have unused animation of doing a twirling punch like the golden ghosts and purple punchers. Mr. Lug's waiters are somehow a type of grabbing ghost according to their Japanese name. GBH map colors. I've seen new players confused on what the colors on the Game Boy Horror map mean since the game never explains them. Dark gray means you haven't been in a room before. Light gray means you have, but the room is dark. Any rooms with color means they're lit. Yellow rooms are for area one, blue for area two, green for three, red for four, and light green for hallways. Ghost bios. Pressing the Z button will display your collectibles on the Game Boy Horror. This includes the portrait ghosts. Each one comes with a description about it that explains a little bit of their backstories. Readable books. Within the study and Nana's room are bookshelves you can interact with and read books from. They all serve as hints for one part of the game or another, along with adding some character, like Nana messing with Miss Petunia's water temperature, which is a hint to use the ice element on her. Boneyard Plant Within a backyard area of the mansion, known as the Boneyard, a small bud can be found in some dirt. If you water it with a poltergust, it will grow into a sprout. 
If you come back and water it again after catching Bogmire, it will grow into a big flower. Coming back one more time, this time after catching Brulossus, watering it makes it release a big golden diamond. This is extremely important for a good ranking, as it's required to have enough money to get the A rank. Massive Shortcut a huge, very difficult skip can be pulled off in speedruns to skip almost the entire game. I'm not going to go into all the details because it's a lot of steps, but it starts when you catch Chauncey and you go behind the chest as it spawns. This causes Luigi to clip out of bounds, and through a long, very specific set of inputs, Luigi will eventually clip into the secret altar at the very end of the game where King Boo resides. Our Mansion On the file select, the top right has text that reads, Welcome to your mansion, which then fades into, Welcome to our mansion. Ghost Humming Luigi isn't the only one who hums the game's main theme. Sometimes in dark rooms, you can quietly hear ghosts humming along with the music. In a strange, gargly manner. Two-player. Unused in the game is a partially functioning two-player mode that even has split-screen. An unused model of Mario also exists that has poltergeist traps and shares animations with Luigi, meaning that he would have been player two. Weird posters. In the twins room and the second floor washroom, an odd poster can be found that has realistic depictions of what appears to be Frankenstein's monster, Dracula, and the Wolfman in front of the mansion. Trying to suck it up will cause it to turn into an image of Ulasis with the text, GET out of HERE! This also happens when trying to suck up the projector in the projector room. The 3DS version replaces the monster poster with a poster of a field and trees. Within the telephone room is another poster, this one saying Western, and has a realistic cowboy. Hey Luigi, what's the hold up? Within the courtyard, you can faintly hear Mario's voice saying, <laughs> Angel Statues. Within Egad's portrait ghost gallery are these eerie realistic angel statues. Interacting with them causes their wings to slowly move. They were supposed to be more portrait ghosts. Evidence for more portrait ghosts being planned for the game exists. Unused is a larger version of the gallery. A screenshot of the beta version exists that show there were originally going to be a chef ghost within the kitchen. It's seen holding a tomato, and that tomato model is still unused in the game. Two for the price of one, Grandma! This is a famous quote from the YouTuber Chugga Conroy, who I sound exactly like according to commenters apparently. He would say this with catching two ghosts at once. Two for the price of one, Grandma! Also, since I'm talking about that old Let's Play of his, I feel the need of acknowledging his grabbing ghost impression. Yeah! I love making that. Extra Boo Dialogue. Throughout the game, Luigi has to find boos, each one with a unique name and introduction dialogue. Boos are unique as they can phase through walls to then hide in furniture again. Each and every boo in the game has three unique pieces of dialogue for finding them. You really wouldn't ever even see half of this dialogue on a playthrough normally, especially with earlier boos. Here's some of my favorite lines. Man, I'm saucy. Nobody loves me. Boogity boogity! You stink! Ech, dirty man. I'm bad. Crazy boo walking. You're a tragedy. Quoth me. Go away. Oh, the boo manity. Pesky plumber. Poppycock. That is so your color. Gad's noisy feet. 
I've always liked it when cartoon characters have distinct walking sounds, and while you don't hear it much, EGAD is no different. Star Wars reference. If you try to go to the secret altar without the key and at least 40 boos caught, King Boo will appear and block you from entering. During this, he will say, I will not give up my favorite decoration. I like Mario just where he is. This is a reference to Star Wars Return of the Jedi when Jabba the Hutt says, Luigi's Mansion 2D Luigi's Mansion 2D is a pretty cool fan game originally made by Shadow Kami that later picked up by the Happy Face King. As the name suggests, the gameplay is pretty much Luigi's Mansion, but 2D. Because of this, it goes for more of a Metroidvania direction. It's pretty neat, you should check it out. Boo Leitmotif A leitmotif is essentially like a reoccurring theme within music that gets like, remixed and stuff. I don't know, I'm not good at explaining music junk, and you probably already know what a leitmotif is. Anytime something Boo related is happening in the game, the game will pretty much always play a variation of this theme. Power Star Sound When Luigi picks up one of Mario's items, it plays the same sound effect as Mario entering a painting or picking up a star in Mario 64. <laughs> This is extra fitting for when Luigi picks up Mario Star. Like the Daisy poster, this is another one of those supposed proofs that Luigi's Mansion was originally developed for the N64. Uh, this one doesn't make much sense to me either. Luigi turns faster in sidestep mode. Name says it all. Sidestep mode can be kind of useful during Blackout, especially that ghosts tend to not spawn when you're walking sideways. Janitor Pianta. Within Super Mario Sunshine, there's a Pianta within the air ducts of Hotel Defino, a haunted hotel. In it, he references Luigi's Mansion by saying, Wicked someone come along and suck him up with a vacuum! Home Alone. The box art of the game resembles the cover photo for Home Alone. Wind Waker references. The character Mako, from The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, has a great resemblance to Egad. Meanwhile, the item, the Spoils Bag, resembles Bogmire's face. Commercial. So, the commercial of the game is about this dude hanging out with this goth chick in this liminal space area. He looks into her necklace, which has the Lee the Lava Land painting in it, which sends him to this Luigi's Mansion cube dimension. Then he's sent back and the goth chick has turned into a GameCube. People in this weird cube dimension is how they tended to advertise early GameCube games. Interestingly, the narrator says that you only have one night to save Mario. This may have been where the 24 hour time rumor came from. Our pumping. Our pumping is a very useful speedrun trick for catching boos. As you suck up a boo, you need to hold L, make sure you're holding R first, and let go of R for half a sec for every 10 HP a boo loses. This will cause a boo to get stuck, so you don't have to worry about it escaping the room. This only works up for 150 HP though, so those late game boos are still gonna escape. Secret Reset Another trick speedrunners would know. Holding down X, B, and Start will reset the game. N64 artwork. Despite Mario's in-game model being his usual GameCube look, the game has several instances of N64-era designs. 
Mario's promo art is an edited Mario Golf render, and the render of Toad on the save screen is from Mario 64. Impossible A rank. In the PAL releases of the game, it is impossible to get an A rank on the normal mode, as the goal requirement is higher than the amount of treasure that exists in the game, which means the hidden mansion is required for the best rank. Monster Under the Bed When searching for booze inside of furniture, sometimes it will fake you out by having a ball with a boo face on it instead. This face is also hidden underneath the crib within the Smash Bros. Luigi's Mansion stage, though there's no legitimate way to be able to see it in-game. Explorable Lab If you mod the game to allow Luigi to walk around the lab freely, you'll find there's a lot more to the lab modeled than you normally see. It has doors that lead to the training room and portrification chamber. The ladder behind EGAD is even fully functional. Some people theorize that Luigi would have been able to explore the front yard after climbing it up. Amusingly, reaching the top will cause Luigi to fall on top of EGAD's head, and the game acts like EGAD is ice for some reason. Lydia cheats on Neville. This theory comes from how Neville likes to spend time alone reading books. Lydia complains in her childcare diary found in the study that the twins are too shy like their father. Lydia seems to be dissatisfied with Neville's introverted nature. When scanning Lydia with a Game Boy Horror, she says, Everything's coming up roses. A phrase that comes from a song about a woman who can't decide between two men. Another mention of flowers in the game is Biff Atlas's description, which says that he has a love for lilies. Biff Atlas is notably much more outgoing than Neville, and much more conventionally attractive as well. Could it be that Lydia is dating Biff due to her dissatisfaction with Neville? A strong hint that Lydia may be cheating on Neville for Biff is that there are two busts seen in the artist studio, Lydia and Biff. And to make things worse, Neville describes in his baby care diary that Chauncey is a lot louder and scarier than Henry and Orville ever were, a trait not carried by Neville. Hidden Coin on a different note, originally the game had a spinning coin icon as part of the coin counter. The spinning coin is still in the final game, but out of bounds and is not collectible. The position of the coin depends on what room Luigi is in. Matryoshka Doll Unused in the game is a low-poly Matryoshka doll of Luigi. It was supposed to be the icon for Luigi in the Game Boy Horror map, but was replaced by his head in the final game. Why is Bowser there? Bowser's appearance at the end of the game kind of feels like it comes out of nowhere. It's thought by most people that it's actually a fake Bowser created by King Boo. Would explain why Bowser's head could just fly off, with King Boo hiding inside him. But what if this wasn't a fake Bowser? When you find Wario's lost items, you take them to Madame Clairvoya, where she will use such item in her crystal ball to contact the spirits of power and sight to find information on him. When giving her Mario's final item, she will say the following. Oh, what is this? Bowser? How can this be? I see the hideous form of Bowser! Is Bowser somewhere in the mansion? I, I cannot believe it, and yet I see it! I thought that Mario had soundly defeated Bowser. Has King Boo somehow revived Bowser? These are some very odd lines of dialogue. Mario actually killing off Bowser is such an unusual concept. The last confrontation between the two was in Paper Mario. That game had to be one of the most brutal defeats for Bowser. Dude exploded in space, how do you recover from that? After defeating him, there's a sign that says, Bowser was badly beaten and will likely never return. 
So, was Bowser really killed off and then revived by King Boo? What if King Boo is possessing Bowser's dead body? Maybe King Boo is the ghost of Bowser. Okay, this entry is getting a bit unhinged at this point. ELH.SZP ELH.SZP is an unused, faceless, twisted creature. It's very unfinished and doesn't have any textures or behavior. Some people say this would have been a ghost who wandered freely around the mansion and chased Luigi when come across with no way of defeating it. There's no proof of such thing, though. There are unused fire and ice particles with ELH, though, meaning it could have been some elemental-themed ghost. My theory is that it could have been some slime creature found in the pipe room. First, Luigi would use the ice element to freeze it, then he would use the fire element to unfreeze it, leaving it in a daze, allowing Luigi to suck it up. Who knows what ELH would have really done, though. LEGO Sets Official Luigi's Mansion themed LEGO sets exist that include Golden Ghosts, Garbage Can Ghosts, Grabbing Ghosts, and Bogmire, among other characters and set pieces. Bowser Tail Attack If you try to fight Bowser Super Mario 64 style, he'll just whack Luigi with his tail. Shining Ghosts Did you know the shooting stars in the observatory have little limbs and faces? They're called Shining Ghosts, too. They served a different purpose in the beta, where they were white and would just bounce around a room, and could be easily sucked up. Unused in the game are variants of them, in several different colors. I think these unused variants are more well known than the fact that the yellow ones are actually used in the game. Returning Boos The Luigi's Mansion sequels continue to have boos with puns for names. You might find some are familiar, as some returned from the first game. Although, for Dark Moon, this doesn't apply for English. Gad's Glasses Glasses with a swirly design often appear in Japanese media, and even appears on other Mario characters such as Fawful and Iggy Koopa. Mario Story It's almost impossible to tell, but the book Neville reads is called Mario Story. This is the Japanese name for Paper Mario. Portrait Ghost Family Tree While Neville, Lydia, Chauncey, Henry, and Orville are the only ghosts confirmed to be all related in a family, some people theorize that all the ghosts are related in one big family tree in some way. Like, Mr. Worlinda could be Lydia's brother, and Nana could be the wife of Vincent Van Gogh. Whirlinda's Visibility The Whirlindas are very simple to catch. You just have to wait for them to bow, which exposes their heart, allowing you to catch them. I've had issues in early playthroughs where their heart just wouldn't become visible. I've seen other people struggle with this issue too. Well, you just have to make sure you stand on one of those spinning platforms. It's just a weird thing that the game never hints about. It's something I don't think everyone realizes. I didn't realize it at first. Before the mansion. During the early concept stage of development, Nintendo thought about the game taking place in an apartment or a ninja house before settling on a haunted mansion. Outdoor areas like grasslands and deserts were even considered. Losing the gold diamond. So, the end of a Luigi's Mansion playthrough tends to go like this. You finally catch the last boo in the game. It drops the gold diamond. Like the one in the Boneyard, it's very important, as it's also required to get the best rank. EGAD calls you to save your game, you grab the golden diamond, and you go to the final boss. And maybe this is your first time playing, or your rusty at the game, and you could have died on the final boss. That's fine, the game just saved after catching the last boo. You beat the final boss, see your treasure results, and... you're missing the second diamond. 
this is because the game saves after catching the last boo, but before obtaining the diamond. And when the game is reset, like when you die, the diamond despawns permanently, screwing your save file for an A rank, making all your work catching each and every boo be wasted. This is a pretty bad oversight. If you want to play it safe, make sure to save with Toad after obtaining the gold diamond. Ghost Meter After Nintendo scrapped the overheat meter, but before they added the element meter, there was a meter that kept track of how many ghosts you caught. Actually, it's still in the final game, but very hidden. When you run out of an element, the meter will quickly fade out, but the meter actually briefly turns into a colorless full meter instead. This is the ghost meter. Normally you'll always see it full, cause it maxes out at 10, but going through the training room again will reset it. Now that the meter reset, I'll catch one ghost, obtain fire to use it all up, and as you can see, it shows that I've caught one ghost. Inaccessible Blackout Ghosts During the blackout sequence, there are temper terrors and garbage can ghosts sitting in the sitting room and guest room. Those are rooms you aren't able to go to at this point of the game. Strange Slope Physics any slope in the game causes Luigi to very slowly slide down them. This includes stairs, which can make it look like Luigi is slowly stepping down the stairs on his own. RPG Elements According to the game's director, Hideki Kono, there was supposed to be some RPG system where doing tasks changed the room. Any more details about this system is unknown. Chauncey controls the chandelier. In the beginning of the game, standing in the middle of the foyer will cause the chandelier to fall on Luigi and a laugh will play. This laugh is Chauncey's voice. Once you catch him, the chandelier won't fall down anymore. Modding Scene Luigi's Mansion has its own modding community with small mods made for the game. The most well-known stuff are the beta recreations. The Ghosts When They Were Alive There are portraits throughout the game that seem to be the portrait ghosts when they were alive. These include Neville, Lydia, Chauncey, Mr. Rolinda, Spooky, Nana, Slim Bankshot, Henry, Orville, Soupy, and Vincent Van Gogh. Repurpose TV. On EGAD's Ghost Portrificationizer is a screen with three ghosts on it. This texture is repurposed from a TV that was in the foyer within the Space World FMV, and the ghosts on the TV are taken from a later scene from the same FMV. Suspicious Doctor. E.Gad's morals are... Mm, questionable. He owned all these ghosts and wants Luigi to capture them again, but a good decent amount seemed totally innocent, and then according to the sequel, he just sold them all. And speaking of him selling, he was the one who sold Bowser Jr. the magic brush, causing the entire events of Super Mario Sunshine. E. Gad being described as a suspicious looking doctor at E3 2001 has always stuck to my mind. Well, that's worse. There's a suspicious looking doctor telling Luigi he needs to get rid of all the ghosts to save Mario. Weird straps. During the cutscene of Luigi first entering the mansion, the straps of the poltergust are there, out of bounds, bouncing up and down. Wouldn't think I'd find backpack straps to be kind of unnerving. Room 01A. A basic empty unused room. Apparently it may have been where the hidden room is in the final game, and would have connected with the foyer through a door. 
it likely would have had a very different purpose than the hidden room. Anyone else getting slight backroom vibes? Mr. Lugs over ate to death. According to the Game Boy Horror, he ate himself to death but still wasn't satisfied. This is the only confirmed cause of death for any of the portrait ghosts in the game. Mr. Lugs also might be a reference to Mr. Creosote from Monty Python's The Meaning of Life, who both overate to death and projectile vomits. Choking Luigi A creepy unused effect exists where Luigi is poisoned and starts choking, causing him to rapidly lose health. Luigi's eyes also flash back and forth from his unused depressed eyes and back. Well, we're at the halfway point of the iceberg now. Take a break to grab a drink or something if you need it, and we'll continue to go deeper. Boot. In the kitchen and butler's room, there are boxes that are supposed to say food, but the texture is flipped, so it looks like it says boot. Upside down Luigi. Whenever you catch a boo, Egad will call Luigi. At a few points of the game are these panels that will flip Luigi's gravity, Super Mario Galaxy style. If a boo gets sucked up into the poltergust, right as Luigi stands on one of these panels, Egad will call Luigi as usual, but Luigi will be upside down on the ground as he talks to him. Dust Physics Guy Luigi's Mansion has some fine details for a game made in 2001, and that includes the dust. The game secretly tracks every particle of dust Luigi sucks up. One programmer was the one responsible for programming the dust physics for six months straight. Egad's Eyes If you look closely, you can see that Egad's glasses are slightly transparent, and you could see beady little eyes behind them. Ever since I saw them, I could never unsee it. Chauncey Gender Mishap Despite Chauncey being a boy, his room is entirely designed for what's typically a girl's room. This could imply that Lydia and Neville thought Chauncey was going to be a girl before he was born, and got his room all ready for one. Animal Crossing Sound Similarities the composer for Luigi's Mansion is Kazumi Totaka, who has also worked on the Animal Crossing series. There are some audio similarities between Luigi's Mansion and Animal Crossing, such as coins sharing the same sound effect as bells in the first game. The ghost portrifications room theme sounding similar to the museum theme. and Professor Egad's voice being based off of Animal Lee's, the voice sounds the animals make. <laughs> Early voice clips. There's a unique voice clip of Luigi getting hurt in the Japanese version. Whoa! And several other voice clips unused in the game for Egad. <laughs> Luigi, I got you. Luigi, got you. Hang on, to Mario. Whew, mamma mia. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah! Whoa, Ghosts. Mysterious voice saying, 
that last one is sampled from this. Welcome to Which is also an edit of this. Welcome to Acid Theater. Both come from the sound library, Spectrosonic's Distorted Reality 1. One of Luigi's unused voice clips is him saying, Ow, oh, oh, nice doggy, nice doggy, oh, pet, pet. This would be reused for the trailer of the 3DS version, and the first part of the voice clip would be reused for Super Mario 64 DS when he comes in contact with fire or lava. Ow, oh, oh, oh. Luigi's Diary Paper Mario released shortly before Luigi's Mansion. Luigi's Mansion is foreshadowed in that game as Luigi writes down in his diary about how he's afraid of ghosts and how he wants to have his own adventure with his name in the title. A weird tidbit is that Luigi mentions he wants to sleep on the top of the bunk bed, but in Luigi's Mansion, when you scan the bunk bed in the twins room, Luigi says he always liked the bottom bed better. Pikmin movie takes up most of disc. Within the options menu is the ability to watch a trailer for Pikmin. This trailer takes up most of the data on the disc, as FMVs tend to do with games. It's just funny to think that most of a Luigi's Mansion disc is taken up by Pikmin content. Designed for sidestep mode. Originally, the game only had the sidestep mode until the team wanted to add in an easier to use control scheme. Even if Hideki Kono wanted to only have the sidestep mode as part of the game's challenge. Respawning Speedy Spirits If you don't catch a speedy spirit immediately as you find one, it's pretty tough to start catching it as it flies around the room so fast. A helpful trick is to leave the room and come back in. Then the speedy spirit will go back in its hiding spot, allowing Luigi to catch it as soon as it appears again. They cannot respawn if they disappear from failing to suck them up, however. Fire and Ice Explosions Pressing down R all the way to spew out an element will shoot out a big ball of said element. If you shoot a ball of fire or ice at a wall, and reset the game as soon as the ball hits the wall, coming back to the room will keep the particles exploding against the wall forever. This does not work with water, however. The explosions will cause a side effect where it'll activate all the candles in another room. Doing the glitch in the foyer will cause the parlor portrait cutscene to play in a glitchy manner. Doing the glitch towards the right of the first floor hallway will cause the key in the fortune teller's room to spawn without Luigi even going there. Jumping Mario When Luigi finally gets the painting of Mario, he puts it through the portrificationizer backwards to free his bro. When Mario is in the ghost portrificationizer, he's in his traditional jumping pose for a while, but it's very hard to tell in game. Who hid Mario's items? While Mario seemed to have washed his hat while exploring the mansion, and hid his letter in the birdhouse right as he was taken by booze, his glove and shoe are inside chests that spawn from catching ghosts, and his star is in that weird otherworldly space area. How those other items got there is unknown. Grabbing Door Glitch While behind the nursery chest, like in the speedrun trick I talked about earlier, if you have Luigi hold a ball with a vacuum and back up into the wall to clip out of bounds, Luigi will be carrying an entire door for half a second. Toad or Toads Throughout the game, Luigi encounters Toad in several different places. Or is it different Toads? Regardless, it's strange how they, along with E. Gad in the beginning of the game, are in rooms that are locked for Luigi. Conservatory Portraits It's rumored the ghosts found on the conservatory portraits and posters would have been actual ghosts you could find and catch, but were replaced by Melody. As usual with rumors, 
they don't really have much to back it up. Crouch. Originally, Luigi had the ability to crouch. Unused animations suggest he would have been able to dodge roll as well. Scrapped Shortcut. As seen from the E3 2001 demo and an unused earlier Game Boy Horror map, there was supposed to be a door connecting the foyer to Area 3's hallways. This would have been very useful in the final game, so you wouldn't have to walk all the way through the first floor's hallways to reach the rest of the second floor. Stake. When Luigi is at the balcony with Toad, a stake is loaded in by Spooky's doghouse. When you actually get to the boneyard though, the stake is not there. It can be seen when Luigi is at the boneyard in pre-release footage though. Hidden Tunnel Since we're already talking about the boneyard, you can get to the graveyard by scanning the doghouse. It will then suck Luigi up, and the tree stump spews him out into the graveyard. There is collision for a hallway to the left of these areas, out of bounds, signifying there may have been a tunnel that connected the two originally. Though, apparently the collision might be there due to a bug. In a trailer, a hole can be seen in the graveyard that looks perfect size for Luigi to travel through. Chef goes to see Parmesan. One of the readable books in the game is Darkness Is Their Cheese by C. Parmesan. Every other book with a known author is a character that already exists in the game. It's unknown who C. Parmesan is. Perhaps this is the name for the scrapped chef ghost. Wet Luigi. A ghost named Miss Petunia can be found in the second floor shower. You're supposed to open the shower curtain and spray her with the ice element to be able to catch her. If you open the curtains, but don't spray her with ice, she will spray water at Luigi, causing a unique animation of him getting soaked. The animation is also supposed to play if Luigi would get hit by these little water element guys, but they always float above Luigi, so it's impossible to get hit by one. Poop ghosts. Flying fish, those uh, little floaty ghosts in a courtyard and pipe room, are called poopoo in Japan. While poopoo is a Japanese automatopoeia for fart, many of the ghosts in the game have poo in their name, because poo essentially means poop. The thing is though, internally they're called poo, spelled like this, and in beta footage, they're seen spawning from a toilet. Yoshi's Island References Two ghosts in Luigi's Mansion resemble enemies from Yoshi's Island. The ceiling surprises look and act similar to the Booblaws, and Jarvis might be based off of Roger the Potted Ghost. Bite it. On a similar topic, the ghost guys who wield bidents, which I didn't even know tridents with two prongs were called bidents until working on this video, are references to the Bezos from Mario 2. Brawl name. If you hit the random button when naming a custom stage in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, one of the names could be Egad. Boo Woods. Boo Woods is the name of the forest Luigi's Mansion takes place in. The name was only established in Mario and Luigi Partners in Time. Kind Bodybuilder. Fifth Atlas's Game Boy Horror description calls him kind. Well, apparently he's kind to everyone but Luigi, as getting his heart will read, How do you like to be my punching bag, weakling? Egad's Research Journal. Professor E. Gad's research journal is a series on the official Luigi's Mansion website that tells the origins of Gooigi. It was originally made to promote the 3DS remake of Luigi's Mansion, but now focuses on Luigi's Mansion 3. Boo Caster Who? Boo Caster is the only Boo in the game that doesn't directly say their own name. It will show the Boo's name in their second and third dialogue box, though. Spark Elemental Reactions 
The red exploding hallway ghosts, known as sparks, react differently depending on what element you use on them. Fire makes them instantly explode, water makes them disappear, and ice does nothing to them. Gold text. It's almost impossible to tell, but the gold bars and dollar bills say gold on them. Manual mistakes. The US manual has an image of E. Gad speaking Japanese. Another page has an image of an earlier version of the master bedroom with the bed being in a different location. What's this? You've ever found this message randomly when scanning a piece of furniture? It seems like it doesn't mean anything when you see it in the dark, but if you see it in a light room, you'll find it means there's a boo hidden inside. Or a ball. Or one of its bomb traps. Shivers loves Melody. Shivers is the butler ghost who wanders around the part of the hallway you can hear Melody's music from the conservatory in. Scanning Shivers' heart reveals that he has a passionate love for Melody and wants to win her heart. Which is kinda creepy because he's like 50 years older than her. Where does Toad go? During the blackout, Toad goes completely missing, but he does call Luigi. Maybe he was scared and ran off into Egad's lab to call? WarioWare pre-release assets. In WarioWare Get It Together, there's a Luigi's Mansion micro game that uses early versions of the furniture. This just proves that Nintendo still has prototype assets of Luigi's Mansion to this day. Skeleton is buried here. There is hard to make out blurry warped text on the signpost in the boneyard. While Luigi says it's, here lies Mr. Bones, the actual text on the sign barely makes out skeleton is buried here. The boneyard comes up a surprising amount on this iceberg. Beta Mansion on title screen. The beta had a bit of a simpler design of the mansion, like lack of chimneys and more basic looking walls. The mansion seen on the title screen is in fact this early version of it. Original story. In the demo, Egad says that this is a famous haunted mansion he's been living in for his ghost research, but in the final, the mansion suddenly appears in front of Egad's lab after King Boo set free all of Gad's ghosts. Prototype GameCube image. Unused in the game is an image of an early version of a GameCube that had a transparent window to show the disc inside the console. The image was apparently used as a placeholder for boss backgrounds. eBay prototype. A mysterious prototype of Luigi's Mansion was sold on eBay back in 2019. Nothing is really known about this prototype or who owns it. Extra music added in. The original Japanese version of the game was missing a few themes, those being the portrait ghost catching theme and the shy guy theme. Also in the Japanese version, the music for the observatory is very atmospheric and plays the intro part twice. doesn't loop it beyond that. In other regions of the game, it keeps the atmospheric part, but has the outdoors theme to go along with it. wants a creepy baby doll head. In the clockwork room, there's a table with the head of a creepy baby doll. When skinning it with the Game Boy Horror, Luigi weirdly says that he always wanted one of those. It's believed the reasoning for this is because the room was mirrored with another table on the opposite side of the room 
that has a fancy clock on it where Luigi says the same line. Fun Jarvis facts! Jarvis weirdly has a couple of quirks and unique facts, like the Yoshi's Island inspiration I mentioned earlier. I didn't want to have several entries on just Jarvis of all things, so I compiled them on this entry. The first fact is that Jarvis is the only non-boss portrait ghost in the game who doesn't have text for scanning his heart. There is unused text for doing so, but I don't blame Nintendo for forgetting to add it in properly, as there's not really a moment you would want to stop and scan his heart. They did fix this in the 3DS version though. The second fact is that in Japan, his Game Boy Horror description questions what he uses for a toilet. The third and last Jarvis fact is that he has a strong resemblance to the Fu and Taifu enemies from later Mario games. I like to think that he's the ghost of one of them. Just who is Mr. Bones? A few points of the game have these skeleton ghost enemies called Mr. Bones. All common enemy ghosts in the game are creations of Vincent van Gogh, but these guys seem to be an exception. The Mr. Bones are seen rising out of the ground from the graveyard like actual dead people. This is getting a little bit too spooky for me. Name Origins Many of the character names have neat origins, not just in the English version, but several other languages. If you've seen my Pikmin 2 Regional Differences video, this entry should feel familiar. Sometimes Egad can be heard saying, Uyama. This is his Japanese name, a reference to one of the game's character designers, Yoshiyuki Oyama. Oyama also means, oh my god. In fact, one of his voice clips even sounds like he says, oh my god. Omega? What I like is that, like, every other language has their own play on words for Iga's name in a similar manner. I especially like the names Clemens Wibis, a play on the Dutch word for weirdo, and Karl Tastroff, a play on catastrophe, which happens to be, like, the same in French. Doesn't seem to be a reference to anything, but in the Italian version, Neville and Shivers share the same last name, Brividi, suggesting they're directly related. The Floating World Lindas is based off the Flying Wall Lindas, a circus group of daredevil and stunt performers. Their French name is the Flying Bellini, a reference to the Bellini Brothers, or better known as Paffendorf, a German dance duo. Shivers' French name is Nestor, a reference to the butler in the Adventures of Tintin. Bogmeyer's Italian name is Ombretta, which means Little Shadow, and is shared with Vivian from Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Biff Atlas's name is a reference to the mythological Greek titan, Atlas, who was forced to hold up the sky. His German name is Mr. Astral Universum, a reference to Mr. Universe, a bodybuilder contest. Henry and Orville have several different references. The Japanese names are just Juan and Ted, or more accurately, Juan and Tedo. Their English names come from Henry Ford and Orville Wright, with Henry riding a toy car and Orville riding a toy plane. Their French names are Igor and Grishka, reference to Igor and Grishka Bogdanov, famous television presenter twins in France. And their Spanish names are Pedro and Enrique, named after famous historical Spanish stepbrothers. Sue P's English and Japanese names are the same. While Sue P might be based off the word sleepy, it's also based off the Japanese automatopoeia for sleeping, Sue P. The Clockwork Soldiers don't have names in English, but in Spanish, they're Claudio, Francisco, and Rodrigo. I don't think I need to explain Vincent Van Gogh. His Spanish name is Pablo Sicasso, which I don't think I need to explain either. After such a long entry, let's get back to the shorter ones. Mission Mode Unused in the game is the text Mission Mode, and in Iwata Asks, it was said that the game was supposed to have a multiplayer mode similar to Dark Moons. Diffusing Bombs Bet you didn't know you could delete Boo's bomb tricks with water. It's not necessary to do so at all, but still. 
Smash 3DS error. Super Smash Bros. for 3DS has a trophy called Luigi with Poltergust 3000, but it's actually him with the Poltergust 5000 from Dark Moon. This mistake was fixed in the PAL version. MKDS Painting In the Luigi's Mansion track for Mario Kart DS, the portrait of King Boo and Bowser from the end of Luigi's Mansion can be seen. But King Boo is missing. A hit towards his escape, maybe? Origins of King Boo's Laugh King Boo's distinct laugh is a pitched up version of a stock laughter. <laughs> <laughs> a short clip of the same laugh is also used for Bleak in Donkey Kong Country 3 and the Rock Nuts from Banjo Tooie. <laughs> real life Game Boy Horror. While there isn't exactly a real Game Boy Horror, it is based off a Japanese only clear Game Boy Color. Bowling Ghost Animation. Briefly flashing your light on a bowling ghost at just the right moment, specifically as it spits its bowling ball out, can make a unique animation play where it throws the ball in the air before it throws. Supposedly, the animation is much easier to see in the 3DS version by leaving the hallway for a few minutes and coming back, but I couldn't get this to work. TTYD Poltergust Unused in Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door is a sprite of Luigi with a poltergust. Analog Buttons The game has unused support for analog A and B buttons, a scrapped feature for the GameCube. Promo Flashlight An extremely rare official Luigi's Mansion flashlight exists, given away to select invitees at E3 2001. It cast the GameCube logo went on. Holding down the red button will turn off the flashlight, mimicking the B button in-game. Real money. If the mansion was an illusion, and disappears at the end of the game, then how did Luigi keep all the money he collected? Invisible furniture. There are a few spots with invisible furniture Luigi can interact with, and sometimes even scan. Poltergust Ringing Normally, you have to keep pulling back on the control stick while sucking up a ghost to drain its health quickly. If you mod the game where the health drains quickly constantly and use the stronger hidden mansion Poltergust, it will make a ringing sound and cause the ghost to break free. <laughs> Luigi supports animal rights. When Luigi's in the safari room, he can't stand the sight of the taxidermy animals and rugs, saying, How could anyone treat an animal that way? I won't stand for it! When scanning them. King Boo's Mansion. Since the mansion isn't truly real, it's possible that it could be the ghost of an actual mansion that used to reside in the Mushroom Kingdom. Was King Boo once alive and was the original owner of the mansion? 3 AM. The final Japanese version of the game was fittingly finished at three in the morning. Shivers died in a fire. Shivers is deathly afraid when he sees his candelabra lit. Dark thought, but is it possible that he remembers his cause of death when he sees fire? Insane music glitch. The start of a few music based entries here, in the Japanese version, restarting the game right as you select the mansion from Egad's lab several times in a row will cause the music to freak out and go insane. <laughs> Hidden sounds and music. A few tracks have some strange sounds in the background if you listen closely. Toad's theme is one of the few times you hear a more upbeat track in the game, but you can barely hear some off-putting backward sounds in the track.
less hidden, but the gallery theme consists of a couple weird sounds, like what almost sounds like a voice and an occasional mechanical sound. This mechanical sound is actually a lower pitched version of the sample used right before Totaka's song plays. Nursery music. The nursery is one of the few rooms with a unique song to it, as well as being one of the creepiest themes in the game. When Chauncey asks you if you want to play with him, it plays a couple of random notes. If you don't advance his text box and leave the game idle, the music will actually pick up and play a little more upbeat, yet still kind of unsettling theme. There's even an unused earlier version of the track. Alternate Ghost Names Official Luigi's Mansion guidebooks give unique alternative names to all the enemy ghosts. Bats are swealing. Swealing? What? Bats are ceiling dwellers. Blue twirlers are smashers. Blue blazes are water smashers. Bowling ghosts are bowlers. Ceiling surprises are white danglers. Purple bombers are purple danglers. Purple punchers are both bashers and pink mapu based off the Japanese name. Flashes are ice bashers. Garbage can ghosts are banana tossers. Ghost guys are masked ghosts, and this comes from multiple sources. Gold ghosts are both jabbers and orange ghosts. Temper terrors are fire bashers. Grabbing ghosts are grabbers. Mr. Bones is skeleton ghosts. Sparks are ghost bombs and speedy spirits are both blue ghosts and rich ghosts. The most interesting part of this are the purple punchers being called bashers. Both the names Pink Mapu and Bashers come from the same guidebook, so maybe whoever first started calling the scrapped scare ghost bashers read this book and got confused about the two different names and thought bashers were a separate ghost, thus concluding that's the name of the Scare Ghost. Who knows where the nickname Basher actually comes from though. Also, Fire Bashers really should be Fire Jabbers to go with the proper naming schemes. The gym gives King Boo power. Outside the Luigi's Mansion series, King Boo looks like an ordinary Boo with a crown and is usually working for Bowser or even just go-karting and playing sports. Notably, doesn't have the gem on top of his crown within those games. I like to think the gem on his crown gives him power, and is the reason why he has unique eyes and a deeper voice in the Luigi's Mansion games. Inventions inspired by ghost powers. This theory comes from how in the sequels, King Boo is shown to have the ability to trap others into paintings like the Portrification Nizer. 
Before the events of the first game, while Egad was studying King Boo, he could have found out about that power of his and went to recreate it with a machine. Another example is that Vincent Van Gore has the ability to make ghosts come to life with his paintbrush, inspiring Egad to invent Sunshine's magic brush, which can also bring things to life. Lost Artwork there was a never-before-seen piece of promotional art that was eventually released when the 3DS version came around. It has Luigi next to a door with a purple puncher sneaking up behind him. Sewer Ghost Supposedly there was a scrapped sewer ghost that got repurposed into the sparks in the final game. I cannot find any more information about this, however. Contorting Luigi. Sometimes when grabbing an item, Luigi will just kinda do this. Flash game. Back when Luigi's Mansion released, an official flash game made to promote the game existed. It's called The Lab. It takes place within Egad's lab as an interactive menu. Interestingly, it shows the same full lab that goes unused in the main game. The various objects in Egad's lab took you to different sections. The bookshelf lists a few books, but only two of them are readable. One of them just describes Luigi's mansion, but comes with a free screensaver. The other is a Luigi history book of his appearances and a bunch of games up to Luigi's Mansion, including an appendix that lists every game he appeared in at the time. Well, except for the ones Nintendo likes to ignore. And if you wanted to see Gilligan's Island, Batman, and The Simpsons all referenced in what is technically an official Mario game, then there you go. The drafting table provides a couple of activities. It has these Luigi's Mansion themed, like, Valentine's cards, coloring pages, and this photo album that has these images of ghosts slapped onto random locations. A ghost can randomly appear on this area and scramble up the text. The monitor just has some bits of gameplay footage. The machine to the left of it displays some screenshots of the game, but the lever on the right will play a random sound effect. This could be the sound of lightning or a golden ghost but it can also play some screech-like sounds. Like the drafting table, a ghost can appear here too, but this time we'll turn out the lights, and you need to use a flashlight to turn the lights back on. The door to the middle takes you to a minigame, Polter Q. It takes place on a pool table, but you use the poltergust to suck a ball and get it to ricochet into one of the holes. The door to the right takes you to Ask Madame Clairvoya. It's pretty much a magic eight ball. You type in a question, and a crystal ball responds with something random. Interestingly, Madame Clairvoya is voice acted. As they say in France, we oui, oui. MP4 Boo. Unused in Mario Party 4 is an unused Boo model before they had finalized the GameCube look for the Boos. It looks a lot like the Boos from Luigi's Mansion. 49 Days. The Game Boy Horror says that Madame Clairvoya can see almost 49 days in the future. This is a reference to the Buddhist belief that it takes 49 days for a spirit to prepare for the afterlife. Missing King Boo If you look at the Mario painting from the bottom of the well during the blackout, King Boo will be missing. It's also unique to see the secret altar without the lights on. Kinda eerie to see Mario alone in a dark room. Mansion is a hodgepodge. The style of rooms of the mansion tend to widely vary from each other, such as the sitting room and guest room being very different from the rest of the mansion. If the ghosts aren't all related to each other, the mansion might be a hodgepodge of important rooms to the various different portrait ghosts living in the mansion. 
The mansion overall has a liminal and sometimes familiar vibe to it. Some rooms can feel nostalgic for some, but won't speak for others. Mansion can turn emotions into physical beings. In the Game Boy Horror, Bogmire is described as a product of the mansion's fear and despair. This is implying that Luigi is literally fighting a physical being of his own fear. If you try to go to the third floor balcony without catching enough boos, Luigi will emit a boo blocking the door. It will explain itself that it's not actually a boo, but a mysterious power of the boos, a being created out of the desire to take revenge upon Luigi and turn him into a painting. Astral Hall Summoning Circle The Astral Hall is a strange room. The checkerboards on the walls and floor give it a unique vibe. It seems to have this magic aura within it where if Luigi were to enter the door on the right, he loops back to the left. The room's layout has a strong resemblance to a summoning circle by having a star on the ground and candles on each end. Lighting the candles causes many ghosts to appear and attack Luigi. It's one of the few rooms to have shy guys who kind of have a cult-like look to them. It brings back the old question of what are shy guys exactly? What purpose do this room have? Is it just another method of summoning more basic ghosts or was this used to summon Bowser back from the dead? Unused Hands An unused graphic of Luigi's arm reaching out of the dark exists. This was actually meant to be used as a reflection for the cutscene of Luigi opening a door. They end up using a less static effect in the final game. Another unused graphic of a hand exists too, but the purpose for this one is unknown. Uncanny Luigi Renders there are some odd looking renders for the game. Some people have pointed out how off Luigi looks in the same screen. Interestingly, this render is seen in the HUD of some early footage. The second strange render is one seen in Next Gen Magazine that has a weird smiling Luigi holding a GameCube controller prototype as Mario can be seen behind him angry. The third render is from Nintendo Official Magazine and depicts a very weird looking Luigi with an early blue twirler who has pupils. Super Mario 2001 This is an entry I almost removed, but I thought it was interesting enough to keep it in. So I've actually had this iceberg sitting around for a good long while before making this video. One of the entries I wrote down is that apparently unused in the GameCube BIOS is a description for a game called Super Mario 2001. The description says that Mario gets kidnapped and Luigi must save him, which is what happens in Luigi's Mansion, which released in 2001. But it also says that Toad, Peach, and even Bowser help save Mario past me made the stupid mistake of not linking the source, but I thought I remember finding this information on the cutting room floor. I can't find any information about this anywhere. I also remember there being a description for a Pokemon game, and while Pokemon is actually mentioned on the GameCube BIOS, I remember one with a description that something along the lines of, all X amount of Pokemon are back and whatever number they used wasn't even accurate to the amount of Pokemon that existed at the time. I just want to get this info out there, because I'm really curious where past me got this info from, and whether this is even real or not. I guess you just can't plan for this sort of thing. This is what Luigi says when scanning a gravestone. It's just kind of unusual to see a serious remark towards death in a Mario game. Born a ghost. I wouldn't normally talk about such a topic like this, but the Game Boy Horror says that Chauncey was born a ghost. A lot
lot of people question and theorize that this might be a pretty dark implication. Distorted screaming. Within the files is a disturbing audio of warped and distorted screaming. Take a listen. Believe it or not, this is not unused. It's apparently used during the Bulasis fight, just edited and pitch shifted to the point where it doesn't even sound like a voice anymore. Map Zero Story Unused in the game is a test group called Map Zero. It always felt very unsettling to me with the random objects, including the unmoving Mario painting. I feel like it's tradition for Iceberg videos to have some sort of creepy story towards the end. Not that they always have to, but I thought it would be fitting to have one for a Luigi's Mansion Iceberg. Map Zero always felt like it was hinting towards some story to me, so this is what I've gathered from it. When Map Zero loads up, Shivers is briefly seen disappearing. Within the main game, we see that Shivers' room is really small and in poor condition. It looks like it's being used as a storage. Shivers could not be happy with his living condition. He must have resentment towards being the one responsible cleaning everything in the house, but is treated the worst. His Game Boy Horror description says that he's searching for his master's will. Who is Shiver's master though? Well, I think it's King Boo. He's the creator of the mansion. Shivers probably feels he deserves King Boo's will since he's not alive after all. Shivers never could fight it if such thing even existed, so he acted upon revenge towards the king. Even if King Boo doesn't have his will, he has prized possessions. I believe Map Zero is what happens when Shivers takes upon his revenge. He takes King Boo's crown, leaving him helpless on the ground. But that isn't enough, as King Boo has one more prized possession. His painting of Mario. Shivers uses his candelabra and sets the Mario painting on fire, leaving him to burn. It is unknown exactly what happens to Luigi during or after this. Within Map Zero is a severed arm of his. Luigi is able to pass through objects, and Toad is there crying. Luigi is unable to talk to Toad, as if to him, Luigi isn't even there. Soupy Negative Emotional Aura Soupy has some unique aspects about her from the other ghosts that make her stand out. Before you even enter her room, the sitting room has a unique look than anything you see before from the mansion, and just has this unsettling aura to it for some reason. Just from entering her room, this cutscene plays. Though it seems like her bedroom, it's actually the guest room. She's considered the most difficult to catch portrait ghosts to many, and, well, her room's upside down. What might be the most standout point for Sue P might just be her Game Boy Horror description. What was meant to be a short nap seems to have turned into eternal rest for sweet Sue P. Frozen Attic Ghost. This one comes from a personal story. As a kid, I remember seeing an old grainy YouTube video recorded from a camera in front of a TV of an odd glitch. Luigi is in one of the attic hallways, then looks up with the Game Boy Horror facing towards the window. 
Up in one of the corners is a ghost that is completely frozen, distorted, and non-interactable. I don't remember what ghost it was other than some basic enemy ghost. I tried finding this video in Glitch again, but I can't find it no matter what. If anyone could find the video, or at least the Glitch again, I'd love it. It creeped me out as a kid. The beta will be dumped. One day, one day it will. The last entry, Luigi's Infernal Mansion. Luigi's Infernal Mansion is a comparison made by Jenny Mott of Luigi's Mansion and Dante's Inferno. For those not familiar with The Inferno by Dante Alighieri, it's a story about the author's descent through the nine layers of hell. The comparison starts with Dante searching through a dark forest to then be scared off by three beasts. This is already similar to Luigi traveling through Boo Woods in search of the mansion and is terrified and crawls back from his first sight of a golden ghost. Virgil helps Dante go past the beasts and guides him down his descent through hell. Egad helps Luigi avoid the three ghosts and guides him through the mansion with the help of the Game Boy Horror. The first layer of hell is Limbo. Unlike anything further, Limbo is not a place of punishment. Limbo is the place for those who are innocent and never had the chance to know Christ. Christ has only saved very few in Limbo. The first room of the mansion is the foyer, a place that is still within the dark mansion, but is safe from any ghosts. Within the foyer is Toad, a familiar friend who is innocent. The first few levels of Hell serve as an introduction for Dante as he learns the basics of it. The second level of Hell is the first proper level, and is the place where sinners are punished by strong gusts of wind. In Luigi's Mansion, the proper gameplay with ghosts start after the foyer. The first area of the game serves as a tutorial to teach the player the basics of the game, and of course, the ghosts are punished to the poltergusts' winds. The third layer of hell is for those who sin with gluttony and are punished by living in eternal filth. Not long into the introduction, Luigi encounters the garbage can ghosts. Ghosts that are always consuming bananas, are always leaving messes, and are literally shaped like garbage cans. The fourth layer is for those who sinned with greed. The punishments get worse as those here are forced to always joust with large rolling weights. Luigi first encounters the portrait ghosts, the rich people who live in the mansion. This is what catching ghosts become more complex and difficult. The fifth layer of hell is for those who committed the sin of wrath. They are forced to try to swim in a sea of filth. In order to continue past, Dante must face Medusa, marking the end of the introductory levels of hell. In Luigi's Mansion, to finish Area 1, Luigi must catch Chauncey, a ghost in pure rage. His belly flop attack resembles those who swim in the sea of filth. The sixth layer marks this. The introductory levels are over, and the true deep layers of hell start here. Dante's adventure becomes more complex as he faces many more challenges. This level also resembles a graveyard, where sinners are entombed in flame. For Luigi, this is when the game really starts opening up. Much bigger areas, and the game gets more complex with adding in booze and the element system, where Luigi happens to get the fire element here. Area 2 ends off with a graveyard. The seventh layer is for those of violence. They are punished by a rain of fire. Area 3 is when ghosts become more aggressive. Often Luigi will have to deal with fiery explosives seen with sparks and boo bombs, but even raining down from purple bombers in Orville. In the 8th layer, Dante tells that fortune tellers are frauds. 
During this point in the game, Luigi often interacts with Madame Clairvoya and even catches her with his Pulsar Gust. The ninth layer of hell is completely frozen over. At the very end of his journey, Dante encounters Satan, the king of hell, and escapes hell. Towards the end of Luigi's journey, he must use the ice element, such as with Bulaces, deal with the cold storage, and face Bowser and King Boo, the mastermind behind the mansion. Luigi dodges Bowser's ice attacks, then saves Mario, escaping the mansion cleansed from ghosts, and gets Mario out of the painting, back to his original life again. Dante's role through hell was a passive observer, where he must confront the consequence of sin. Luigi, on the other hand? Luigi's role was more akin to Christ, coming down to save those in hell. But while Christ only saved those who praised him, Luigi was unconditional. Luigi was on a selfless mission to save his brother. Madame Clairvoya tells how becoming a painting brings peace, so Luigi usurps the king and brings peace to all who are in the mansion. As the original article ends off, he will bring peace to all. He will not allow suffering to persist. All hail Luigi. And that is the Luigi's Mansion Iceberg. This game is near and dear to my heart, and it's always fascinated me my entire life. I've always loved learning new information ever since I discovered it as a kid. From first seeing its beta, to learning lots of new information, even up to editing this video. Regardless of what you might think of the beta, I think Nintendo still made a classic masterpiece of a game. Despite its short runtime, it's packed to the absolute brim of care, and I feel there's still so much to learn about this game we don't even know yet. It deserves a big iceberg video. And I love short games anyways, it makes it more replayable and perfect to play through in an October night or two. After having a lot of technical issues of both this video and some other scratch videos on mine, I am more than happy to get this finally finished after several months. Working on both the iceberg image and this video was an absolute blast most of the time anyways, and I give serious thanks for anyone who stuck with the whole thing. I really hope I made a great iceberg for any Luigi's Mansion fans, or even anyone curious about the game. I hope y'all have a Luigi-tastic night. Whatever that means.